any rate, I, I was um, born in Romford and we moved to Jerick after the war. We got bombed out several times in London. And um, after the war, all my parents could afford was a bungalow in Jerick because we lost two houses through a doodle bug and a bomb. And when we moved to Jerick in 1948, I think it was, um, I, I had an idyllic life down there as a boy, a completely wild, and it was like there was only a few, very few families moved to Jaywick in them days, and I had the whole of from Jaywick right down to Point Clear as a beach to myself almost, and it was brilliant. But the, the night of the floods, uh, we went to bed and we, we were a uh, I a poor family and I didn't have pyjamas or anything fancy like that. I went to bed in my pants and at whatever time it was in the morning, I was, my dad shook me and wake woke me up and I said, what's the matter? And, and my arm fell out the bed like that, splash, <laughs> and we were on stilts. And um, I got out of bed, tried to grab my clothes, but it's just too late. The, the water, the, my clothes were on the chair and the chair just went over and all my clothes went under water. So uh, we had no clothes on. The same with my brother who's two years younger than me. And um, we were floating around on a mattress after a little while. Then we were floating around on a, on a sideboard. And the water was coming in very, very fast. And my mum, she had a big nightdress on and she fell off off her bed and went underwater and dad tried to pull her up back onto, onto the sideboard or something but she was so heavy with a big night press on that he had, he, she nearly drowned then. Anyway eventually my, my dad had the, the idea that the water was coming in so fast and the bungalow was rocking, moving and a bungalow opposite us in, in Damer Avenue flooded past us and we realised then that it could happen to us, but we, my dad had built a big concrete veranda in the front and we had a garage and a car for the back, which jammed, jammed our bungalow there. But my dad said, we're, we're going to blow it away. So he opened the front door, that let a lot more water in, and then he kicked a hole in the back of the bungalow because they're all like asbestos bungalows. He kicked a hole in there so the water was flowing through the bungalow. It came within a few feet, a few inches of the of where we the ceiling. So he smashed a hole in the ceiling and pushed us up, pushed the kids up into the into the um, thing. There's my painting there. That's my memory of it. We we were in the loft for a long time. That's my memory that I I still all these years later I still dream of. And in the back is the, is a picture of the bungalow where where the hole was that my dad oh, yeah. my dad kicked a hole in the roof in in the loft and was calling to another family um, who were the next road down and they he was answering the man in that in that um, bungalow but eventually that they they stopped talking. And we, what we didn't know was that their bungalow had tipped over and they'd all drowned. My little girl that I used to go to school with on the school bus, which was a Sutton's coach from Jay Wick to Clapton, we used to come into Clapton. Um, anyway, we, we were up in that loft for, it seemed like forever and ever and ever. And eventually in the afternoon, um, we kept shouting out, and a dustbin floated by and I offered to jump in the dustbin and paddle over to the bank and get rescue help. My mum and dad wouldn't let me get in the dustbin, which I thought was a bit mean because I was, I was quite brave there. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, eventually uh, we heard somebody calling out in the late afternoon and um, we, we yelled out to them and two men in a rowboat who I found out years later who they were and it's in here who they are and they come and rescued us but he said we, we can't um, 
we can only take two of you at a time. And my dad said, no, if, if you're going to um, take us, we've got to all go, or none of us. Because my dad didn't want us all just going off across the bloody, bloody um, mm. place. At any rate, we all, we all piled into his little tiny uh, rowboat and he, he dropped us off at the, at the embankment between Brooklands and Grasslands. There was a, the old original seawall, which is just a grass embankment. And um, from there, we were told to walk or run to the Morocco Club. I don't know if any of you remember the Morocco yeah. and Jaywick. Mm. It was a it was the highest point in Jaywick, and that was still dry. And the first day was there, and I remember with my brother going in there, and some first aid lady put a blanket round me, whipped me pants off, and uh, as a 14, 13, 14 year old, very embarrassing. Anyway, we, we were there, we were given a drink and coffee and that, and then eventually we were rowed the famous picture of Jay Rick of the Iron Garage where all the boats rowed, and um, we rowed, we were rowed down there from, from the Morocco to at the end of the road where we were rescued and taken by ambulance or my brother said he, 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 he was taken by a Rolls Royce, but we don't believe him. <laughs> but he reckoned he was taken into Clacton by, by someone's Rolls Royce. And anyway, that's the story basically. We were, ended up in, in um, the a hotel by the hospital, Glengarry, I think yes, it was called. Yeah. Uh, we were there for a couple of days with just all the families were divided up into into families, groups with just a blanket on a on a rope across the inner ballroom and then we were given a um, caravan they opened up Bully Farm caravan for the families who, who were all dispossessed of their homes and eventually after many 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 weeks <coughs> of being there my brother and myself were taken off to Romford to an auntie and we stayed there Basically, that's a blood story. Wow, that's a powerful story. Yeah. I mean, what time of day was it? Can you remember when you were when you left the house and you were going you know, in the house? We were picked up about four o'clock, I think, in the afternoon. It was so it wasn't like afternoon. a tide that came in and went out again then. That, yeah, yeah, but nothing happened there because the water, the, the water was still over. They didn't leave that though, did it? The didn't leave, didn't yeah. leave Brooklands and Grasslands. No, they didn't leave here. And did you get when did you get to see Jay Wick again then? Um, probably we went back to try and rescue a few things and we weren't allowed to and uh, but we, we said well we we want to go back to our house and see what we can rescue and my dad um, he all the blankets and bedding and everything he, he took outside and being an old soldier, he knew what to do with it all. So he, in the on the bank was a barrel full of diesel, I think, or oil or some sort of fuel, and he got a bucket and took took a um, bucket of um, petrol. I think it, he he said it was petrol, but I think it was diesel or something around. Mm -hmm. um, and there was a policeman there who said, "I'm arresting you for stealing." Because they were yeah. being very careful the police about uh, mm -hmm. people stealing mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and uh, he said a rude word to him off and the policeman turned around and walked away <laughs> and it's, it's all in there and my dad um, then burnt all our buildings in the bundle mm -hmm. and it was quite a few months before we actually got back to January. Where did but you then, then we were given, uh, the council uh, wanted to clear Jaywick and they, they gave my parents a deal on a mortgage. So we moved into Clacton, into a little house. My dad had wonderful ideas and he looked at some really big lovely houses, but 
the vacant floor was a little house in Asian Court Road, I don't know if anybody knows. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Door next door. You went to school. You went no, to the I taught in the school. Did you? Yeah. Did you know Mr. Evans? I did. 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 And was it something which yeah. everyone was talking about? You know, you moved to Clapton and people were talking about it in, you know, in school and around town in the months afterwards? Or no, was it something which No, it was quite, quite a few years before it started to get spoken about. There was too many people drowned. Yeah. And, um, my family didn't lose anybody, but our friends didn't, the people I went to school with drowned. It was too raw. Yeah, it was. <coughs> it, it wasn't, you know, it was ages before I got round to talking about it. And Can you remember it. when you found out that other places have been uh, affected? Oh, that well? was um, only when we got into Clacton, into the hotel. We started talking about it. Then we then came over. Uh, Canby Island. And Canby mm -hmm. Island. Mm -hmm. Canby Island got all the publicity. Mm -hmm. They really did. They, all the newspapers that I've got, mm -hmm. most of them are, are Canby Island. Because people died over them. Outside Bay and Harris. Yeah, well, some of them drowned just over there. At the, um, over there. He was a, a watchman in the in the ammunition place. Oh, Bramall Island. Bramall Island. Yeah. 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 He drowned there. He, he was a watchman there. And he, yeah. he was in a little hut there. Guard mm -hmm. watchman. He drowned there. And people drowned up on Leewick. Don't you know? Yeah. Leewick. Yeah. There was a family there drowned. And so it, it, there was lots and lots of people all, all the way along the coast drowned. But, um, mm. And in Holland over the sea, the 1800 died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, it was worse. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, well, that's seen really several... until about 2003, the 50th anniversary. That's when people really started yeah. to talk yeah. about it. Yeah. Uh, it took me a long time to. I was buying all the all the old newspapers online. I could find, so I had lots of things to go on. Yeah, yeah. But. Um, I, I didn't do it for any anything. I only had, only had ten copies made because I just for the band. I just wanted to know what my family, what I got up to as a little boy. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's the plan. I, I haven't. My got up with that one. Yeah. <laughs> of course, uh, I think I only had ten printed, and I've given them out to the family, and then I had because I gave them all the way on. And another one printed for me. So what family have you got? I've got um, my brother and sister were, were there in, in the flats with me. Mm -hmm. But locally, I've got too many children. <laughs> <laughs> children, stepchildren, Robert, <laughs> my eldest boy. Grandchildren. Loads of grandchildren, lots of them. Yeah. I didn't give them, I only gave these mainly to the family. That, did it make you scared of the sea? And did it make you want to move, not live by the sea, like you had? No, I, I love the sea. I've always had boats, and um, always been been out fishing off, off the coast here. Mm. I've had all sorts of boats, and uh, used to keep my big boat round at Sinosis Mill. Mm. Oh, yeah. With the oh, yep, yep. He was a lovely man. It, it was a converted lifeboat, and he actually, we, 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 do, we, we know enough the story now, aren't we? He was such a lovely man, he actually um, made a, a thing for 